I picked up and read several people are typing just for fun. I wasn't planning to make a video on it, but once I was done, I really wanted to. I wanted to make sure that at least some people knew about this really strange and bizarre little novel. The problem comes in how to actually describe it. This is a Kafka-esque science fiction horror novel? which is probably what I'll call the video. It's a science fiction novel that begins extremely Kafka-esque and slowly morphs into something more frightening and uneasy, something that really makes the reader feel a little uncomfortable as it goes. A curious aspect to it though, and it'll probably end up working against the novel with time, is the fact that the entire thing is written as a series of Slack messages. And so its ability to age really depends on how long people are using Slack for, and how well people remember Slack a few years from now. Even if I read a book or watch a film that mentions Skype, it feels old. And we still use Zoom, which is basically Skype. Slack? I don't know. Regardless, this is a very, very quick read. It's about 250 pages, but you can read it in one sitting because it's just a series of Slack conversations. It begins with a man called Gerald who works for a company in New York. I think they're an advertising agency. And Gerald signs in to tell all of his colleagues at the office that he has been uploaded into Slack. His consciousness is trapped in Slack. And everyone thinks it's a prank. Everyone's laughing about it. Ha ha ha, very funny Gerald. And so he says, obviously I'll be working from home today because I'm trapped in Slack. He turns to the Slack help bot for help and the help bot is obviously useless and he tries to convince his colleagues that this is a real thing that's happened to him and nobody believes him. And so the conversations just carry on. Now Slack, I haven't used it much myself, but it has different channels. You can build and write and design different channels for different chats about different topics. So they have chats that are specifically for work and others that are more social. And Gerald is DMing his colleagues and mentioning in the more work-related and social-related chats that he's trapped in Slack and no one believes him. But meanwhile, we're also getting to know all the different characters in the novel. There's an office full of people and you get to know them all pretty well. There's a brand new girl who has just joined and immediately starts shagging one of her colleagues. I haven't said shagging in a long time. Oh well. There's a guy who lives relatively close to Gerald and starts to believe maybe he's telling the truth when Gerald asks him to go check on his body to see if his body is actually still there or if everything has been absorbed into his computer. There's a woman who starts going a little bit mad and is obsessed with a howling that she can hear outside of her window and that howling starts to follow her around the city as she's traveling on the subway etc and all of this is expressed in slack messages the kafka-esque aspect comes from the fact that Gerald is expected to continue to work, no one believes him, and they even talk about how his work actually gradually improves, his productivity goes up, because he has nothing to do except do his work in Slack, sending messages, filling in reports. He can only work because he's trapped in his work. And there's a fantastic moment a little bit later on when the colleague who comes around his place to figure out what to do with his body, says, maybe we should take you to a hospital? And Gerald says, no, you can't do that because our company insurance plan will never cover it. <laughs> so him getting actual physical medical assistance is out of the question because they can't afford it. So there are some wonderful Kafka-esque elements, but as the novel progresses, all of that kind of gets pushed aside and it becomes creepier and more frightening, more disturbing, more surreal and strange, and genuinely quite scary in places. In a very digital horror way, where there are entire pages of corrupted text, or GIFs and images with strange names, or people communicating only in emojis, but those emojis are cracked and broken. People start saying strange things. They start behaving in different ways. And that is a testament to the author's ability to very clearly characterize these people. You really get to know their personalities. And so when they start acting a little bit strangely, typing in ways you wouldn't expect, even in terms of their punctuation, you notice it. And that's really cool, and it adds to the horror aspect. It's not out and out terrifying, but it certainly makes you uneasy. And Gerald is not the only character who's acting strange. As I said, one of them is hearing howling noises, and you have to wonder where this howling is gonna go. And the fact that 
their company is currently dealing with a potential lawsuit because a dog food company they work for has had poisoning issues with its food. Makes you wonder, what does that have to do with the howling? Are those two things connected? It's a very, very well thought out, well plotted story. There's a Chekhov's gun early on that gets resolved later, which felt like a perfect circle. Lovely. You begin to really feel for Gerald. You get very, very invested in his narrative. Everything works very nicely. And the fact that it is all written as dialogue between people in Slack means that it runs the risk of feeling awkward and forced and potentially very soon dated, as I said. But no, the people here really just talk like people. It feels like a transcript. So often you read dialogue in modern novels that just feels awkward. Dialogue that's written in a way that the author thinks sounds right, thinks sounds funny or clever or edgy or cool, but really is just not in any way related to actual speech. This is truly actual speech. This is how people talk. This is how people communicate. This is how people interact via things like Slack and Discord. It truly feels that way. The author has perfectly captured the vibe of corporate culture, of internet discourse, and the amalgamation of those two things, which again is very Kafka-esque. The fact that these characters talk and communicate like friends, but aren't really friends. And corporate culture encourages us to feel that way. One character even brings that up, the fact that we are made to feel like our corporations and companies are family through the language that they implement, and it feels like brainwashing making us feel like corporate culture is a normal, healthy thing. When I first started reading this, it just felt like Kafka's metamorphosis for the digital age. A guy wakes up trapped in slack, rather than waking up as a bug. But both of the characters in the metamorphosis and this are expected to continue their lives, expected to go to work, and are worried about things like their performance and their at-work relationships, and are not prioritizing their own health, their own safety. What is really the problem here? Gerald very much at the beginning feels like Gregor Samsa from Metamorphosis, but as I said, all the Kafka-esque stuff slowly fades away and it becomes something larger, more frightening, some kind of twisted, digital sci-fi horror. And I absolutely adored it. And because it's such a quick read, I could just pick this up again and read it any time. Reading it takes as long as it would take to watch a film. So I feel like I could just enjoy this again, any time. Pick it up, enjoy it in an afternoon. It's a lovely, strange, Kafka-esque sci-fi horror thing. As I said, I don't know how well it'll age, given the slack stuff, the specific language that it uses, gifs, emojis, memes, all of this stuff is going to age very, very quickly. But for this moment, for the next few years, this is going to be a really, really fun and very relatable and very funny at times, strange, almost Lovecraftian at times, Kafka-esque sci-fi horror thing. And I don't think I've mentioned, this really is funny. All the way through, there is a lot of comedy. And that makes the horror hit even harder later on because it takes you by surprise. This is funny. I laughed out loud so many times throughout this novel. It really is hilarious in places. And that again is a testament to the author's ability to understand modern corporate culture and the language and attitudes of online discourse. Brilliant stuff. Check out Several People Are Typing. It's great fun. And subscribe for books.